The Lost Tribes, the story of the tribe of Zebulun. Amid the challenges and victories of life, the tribe of Zebulun experienced a pivotal moment in its history. Zebulun, known for his compassion and maritime skills, generously shared his bountiful catch with strangers and those in need. His influence on the community left a lasting impression. As the sixth son of Jacob, Zebulun brought prosperity to his father while also earning a reputation for his kindness to both people and animals. Leah, his mother, named him Zebulun, a name derived from the Hebrew word Zabal, meaning to dwell or to reside. According to the biblical account in Genesis 30:20, Leah hoped this name would signify that her husband would now dwell with her. Zebulun was born to live on the coast being the only or one of few to be able to go in the ocean without drowning, bringing home fish for his father. On Jacob's deathbed, Zebulun receives a prophecy from his father Jacob about the tribe's future. As Jacob foretells the future, Zebulun learns that his land would be a haven for ships, surpassing even the renowned Sidon. The Most High would give Zebulun the wisdom and understanding to create the first boat. This helped his catch become more numerous and efficient. Zebulun is seen as part of the five largest tribes in Israel during Moses' time, working as scribes for the nation. As recounted in 2nd Esdras during the Assyrians' invasion, this led to the scattering of Zebulun and the other northern tribes. Carried away by the Assyrians in 721 BC, Zebulun would leave the Middle East and go on to Asareth, a land where no mankind dwelt as prophesied. Zebulun's influence in Central Latin America is highlighted, debunking myths about war and showcasing their vibrant marketplaces. Zebulun's people thrived in Central Latin America, with similarities between the Maya and Aztec civilizations. The Mayans were descendants of Zebulun, worshipped one god, much like the Israelites, and their customs and laws reflected striking similarities. From the read, The Hope of Israel by Manasseh, author Ben Israel, page 112. I shall speak somewhat in this discourse of the divers' opinions which have been, and shall declare in what countries it is thought the ten tribes are. Hispaniola, the island of Cuba, the continent of America, Panama, New Spain, and Peru. The word Panama means abundance of fish. The people in Panama were and still do live off of fishing as owning a boat in the less developed parts of Panama is as valuable as a car. When referencing Deuteronomy 33:19, one sees the Mayan or tribe of Zebulon's people extended from southeast Mexico all the way down through parts of the northernmost parts of South America. The conquistadors led by Hernan Cortes destroyed Mayan cities to erase their former glory and heritage. Despite trials and tribulations, the legacy of Zebulun endures, and the descendants endure, awaiting the day they regain their place as royalty in Israel. A myth that has been perpetuated through history is that the Mayan civilization died off, and that prior temples, houses, and cities wasted away with time. History shows the destruction of the cities by Hernan Cortes in order to cause the people to forget their heritage and former glory. Another myth is that when the Europeans found the Mayans, they were warring with each other, practicing cannibalism and human sacrifice. While cannibalism and human sacrifice did exist at some point in Mayan history, not only was it long gone by the time of the arrival of the Europeans, but it was also relatively rare amongst them. In the read, Antiquities of Mexico, it is not in the present aspect of New Spain that we are to look for the remains of Mexican greatness, as every vestige of its former splendor was annihilated by the conquerors. He, Cortez, was compelled to demolish and level with the ground every house as he took it, and 5,000 Indian workmen followed close to his soldiers to complete the work of destruction. The foundations of the present city are raised and stand on the ruins of the old. The confusion surrounding the people's division in Central Latin America is simple. Titles. The Maya did not refer to themselves as Maya during that time because they had no concept of political unity. So by referring to it as the Mayan Empire, it is possible that due to our uniting them under one name that we greatly underestimate their numbers. The Mayan civilization and the Aztec civilizations were different ethnically but were very similar religiously. When we examine Southeast Mexico all the way down to the northern part of Colombia, we find similarities with similar backgrounds only becoming more primitive the further south. 
Civil wars between city-states and tribes were also extremely rare, as there were laws that governed conflicts. Although Zebulon forgot their heritage, they remained very much in touch with many of their customs and laws kept in Israel. Unfortunately, they also brought some of the wickedness they learned under Jeroboam with them. The first human sacrifice by Issachar and Zebulon was used in efforts to free themselves from slavery under a more powerful nation already present. These people had no temples, idols, but only altars where they offered anything but flesh. The Mayans believed in one God, but they acknowledged the gods or spirits behind different aspects of life, much like the Native Americans. The History of the American Indians by James Adair. He says, the Indian natives from Florida to Panama had little religion or policy, and yet he affirms a few pages after that they believed in one true, immortal, and invisible God reigning in heaven called Yokobanagna Maura Cody. This plays a huge role in many of the Mayan and Aztec customs and civil moral laws governing their people. Many of these coincide perfectly with a lot of Israelite laws. The Zebulun's prophetic journey is a remarkable tale of resilience, maritime strength, and cultural influence. Beginning as a compassionate leader and skilled seafarer in Canaan, Zebulun's tribe grew to prominence, known for their wisdom and role as scribes. Jacob's prophecy foretold Zebulun's future as a tribe that would thrive near the sea fulfilling his destiny through innovation and trade. Despite being scattered during the Assyrian conquest, Zebulun's descendants found new life in Central Latin America, specifically Panama, and this was particularly among the Maya and Aztec civilizations. There, they preserved key aspects of their heritage, including their monotheistic beliefs, legal customs, and vibrant marketplaces, despite the devastation brought by conquistadors. Through trials, the legacy of Zebulun lived on, with remnants of their tradition still evident in the region. The tribe's journey embodies both survival and adaptation, pointing toward a future where the tribe of Zebulun's place among the people of Israel will once again be recognized. According to Revelations chapter 7 verse 8 and Revelations chapter 14 verse 1, the tribe of Zebulun will have 12,000 men that'll have the one true God's name sealed in their foreheads. Ahaya, Ashar Ahaya, Exodus 3.14, I am that I am in the Hebrew, is Ahaya, Ashar, Ahaya. These men will be instrumental in leading the rest of the tribe of Zebulun back to the lands of Israel to be a part of Yeshia Christ's kingdom.